welcome to our next first to last. Today we're going to be talking about inspirational women from the Bible. We have our new youth and young adults, Pastor Devon, and we have Paul the train guy, and we have Warwick, <laughs> and I'm Alison, and we're just going to have a quick word from Wesley. Hi everyone, my name is Wesley Harrison. If you don't know me, I started at Trinity back in 2013, just sort of looking for new churches after my stint at Route to Freedom Methodist Church came to an end. And then I've been part of a bunch of bands and led a Bible study. I'm now currently leading a new Bible study for, for quite a while. Also, one of my main achievements, I guess, at, at Trinity itself was being one of the founders of First to Last at the beginning of last year. I was approached to start First to Last um, last year with the idea to grow our community of young adults with new ways of thinking, new ways of meeting, and not just have this, you know, um, separate Bible studies that don't really meet with each other. So we decided to start a proper young adult platform for our young adults. So I got going and, and started working on this and um, with a bunch of other guys that's also on the, on the young adult committee. And we ended up producing what you guys see today. Um, now, why am I speaking about all of this? Well, the main reason is because I have decided to, to step down from um, the committee. So I was the original founder of First to Last, and then I was a chairperson, then stepped aside to let Alison become the new chairperson. And she's led us through this extremely difficult time of COVID online. And she's done an extremely good job of growing the young adults. Um, and through that, and through the confidence of, of the committee, I've decided to, to step down and primarily because of the new step in my life. So if you guys don't know, I think most of you do, but I've got engaged. Um, and as a result of that, one of the commitments uh, me and Hannah have taken is to step away from church leadership for about a year, just so we can work on our own relationship um, for that year. So this was just to let you guys know that I, I won't be initially on the committee anymore or planning you know, the first to last stuff, um, I'll be taking a bit of a break. But it was a lot of fun working with all of you guys and meeting with you guys, coming up with cool lessons um, and cool discussions that we all had. I just wanted to thank the committee. I pray that God continues to take this group to higher and higher places. And I hope you guys continue to enjoy all the products from first to last and its, its new committee. But yeah, thanks guys and thanks for all the love. I really appreciate all the time you guys have put aside to take part in our new adventure as a young adult community, as a young adult family. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. We would just like to thank Wesley for all the hard work he did. He was one of the founding members of First to Last. Uh, we really appreciate it, and we wish you luck on your new journey with God. So we're going to look at different women from the Bible. Um, so guys, will you please introduce which ladies you're going to be talking about today? Yeah, sweet. So yeah, I'll be doing Mary Magdalene. Um, just a quick thing, a few things about her story. Um, some of us know, some of us know her story. Um, but the gist of it is she was cured from seven evil spirits by Jesus um, early on in, in his ministry. And from that point, she actually um, supported Jesus financially. So she was part of the, the woman who actually supported Jesus and, and made sure that the disciples and Jesus were being fed um, and that kind of stuff, which means that chances are she was actually relatively wealthy. She was not a prostitute, um, nor was she the, the woman who poured perfume of perfume over Jesus's feet, um, as many people actually do think, which is something that I found very interesting because I actually thought that as well. She lived in Magdala before following Jesus, Mary Magdalene, Magdala. Makes sense. Yep. <laughs> um, and she followed Jesus throughout everything. I mean, she, she followed him up until he, the death on the cross. She was there when he was buried. Um, she was there for everything. She just listened to his teachings. She engaged with um, the disciples and the people around them. She eventually, after, after Jesus was put into the tomb, on the third day, uh, on the third day, she managed to travel to the tomb in the dark. Um, which is pretty interesting. I'm going to speak more about that later. Um, and then eventually she came back with some other women later that morning after telling the disciples that uh, Jesus wasn't in the tomb. And after that, angels then spoke to her and the woman around them. 
Um, and then John also accounts that uh, Jesus himself appeared to her, and she thought that Jesus was the gardener. Um, and then he told her to go and tell the disciples that he was risen, um, and she did, and that's the last that we hear of Mary Magdalene in the Bible. Awesome. Thank you. Paul? Um, okay, so I'm, I was given the book of Esther. Um, there are two ladies in this, so both of them have, a, have an important role, I think. Um, the way you would find it is in the Old Testament. It was about 100 years after the Babylonian exile. So it was based, based around a, um, a Jewish community that were in um, Susa, I think I pronounced that right, um, Persian capital. So what happened was the King, King Xerxes, um, he, he ordered his wife Vashti to um, present herself at a banquet and she refused. Um, on that he promptly banished her, um, which I think is rather deep to do, but hey. Um, he then t took a new, his new wife, which was uh, Esther, and who's, she's Jewish. At the, around the same time in that, Mordecai heard that there, was a, that there was a plot to kill him, kill the king, and let it be known, and saved his life. Then Herman, who was basically the, the, the right hand to, to the king, decided that he was against the Jews and, and that, and he wanted to actually kill Mordecai, um, and pale him on a stake which is also rather gruesome. Esther was against this, this law that they, they, they were try, he was trying to make against the Jews. So Esther then decided to have a, have a banquet and, and let the king know that she, she was Jewish. Um, she let Surprise. it be known in that. <laughs> Around the same time, uh, that, that evening, Herman then spotted uh, Mordecai and was like, no, tomorrow he's gonna, he's gonna, gonna impale him on the stake. He then approached the king, like, this is, we must make this law and that. And at the same, uh, that evening, the king, he was reading the um, scrolls and that and realized that Mordecai had saved his life. Um, so he was like, no, no, this, this, can't be, this can't be right and everything. Um, short thing short, Herman ended up being, being impaled at the stake. So no longer the right-hand right man. These guys really like their impaling yeah, and impaling like, really <laughs> like <laughs> intense stuff. <laughs> it's, it's brutal. Um, so there was, slowly there was a change of, of government in that, and they found out they, they couldn't just change the law. Once once the law was made, it was it was set. So Esther then um, she was against this, and she went towards the went to the king and let the king know her, her points of view. Um, at that time there was there was a law that you couldn't just walk in; you had an appointment with the king, and it was it was by death. I mean, you couldn't just do it. Um, so. Yeah, she went and did it, and the king at that moment decided to listen to her and not to persecute her for it, which is quite something. I mean, that takes that takes that's courage. So, oh. yeah, Esther does, Esther convinced him to to make a counter law basically, to reduce that to stop the murder against the Jews and that. And at that time, there was at that moment there was a role reversal. The king then made Mordecai his right hand man. So now you've got Esther as the as the new queen. You've got Mordecai that's become the right hand man to the king, um, and yeah. So that all the laws were changed basically. Jews then survived and thrived. Um, that's basically a summary of it. Awesome. Thanks, Paul. Warwick. So I'm going to be speaking about Ruth from the book of Ruth. Uh, so I'm going to start with Naomi, who was who was married to, to her husband, and they packed up their homes uh, and moved from Judah to, to Moab uh, due to a terrible famine that was happening in Judah. So they moved to Moab, and they had two sons who eventually married two Moab uh, women, uh, and tragically all the men passed away. Uh, broken and empty uh, Naomi uh, decided to move back to, to Judah um, and tried to persuade her her, her, her new uh, <laughs> daughter-in-laws uh, that they should stay in Moab, but Ruth uh, was faithful. She, Ruth was one of one of her her daughter-in-laws. Uh, decided to move back to to Judah with her, and this was quite a big thing back in those days because you know uh, I think Moab was one of Judah's like main rivals. Uh, you know they they had a bit of war back in the day, so. Naomi uh, decided to move back and and Ruth uh, decided to go back with her and be faithful to to Naomi uh, to her new or to her mother pretty much and yeah they moved back 
uh, to to Bethlehem in Judah, and then they didn't have much. And I think Naomi, when when she arrived back in Judah, she changed her name. So yeah, Ruth found a, a farm to work at, and it was for a guy named Boaz. So Ruth started working at this farm, uh, and it was it was kind of well worked out because Boaz was a relative of Naomi's family, uh, and this this was quite cool because there was a, a term back in the day uh, called a kingsman uh, redeemer, and this kingsman. Kings- <laughs> was he a spy? No, he wasn't. Uh, but yeah, to give you the the background of a Kingsman Redeemer was based on Deuteronomy uh, chapter twenty five, verse five to six, that a direct relative uh, of a man who had passed away should marry the widow in order to carry on that lineage. So even in the midst of Ruth and Naomi's affliction, uh, God still had a plan. Uh, to take care of both Ruth and Naomi. So that's quite cool. All right, thanks guys. Um, what would you say is your character's best qualities? One of the things that really stands out for me with Mary Magdalene specifically um, is the, the, the pure love that she has for Jesus. Um, you know, she, after, after being cured from the evil spirits, she basically became a Jesus groupie. Like, not in a bad sense, like in the good sense, you know? Um, being able to support Jesus, follow him everywhere. Um, she had this deep, deep love for him that, that I feel is, is really um, powerful. The, the love that she had for him took her all the way to standing at the foot of the cross when he was on the cross, as well as actually like watching his burial. Um, she never left his side, even when the rest of the disciples were gone. She was there the whole time. Jesus, Jesus changed in front of the disciples. Like the disciples had a specific expectation for Jesus um, that when he died on the cross, that expectation was gone. Um, and she would have had the same kind of expectation, yet she never ran and hid like the disciples did. Instead, she focused on the person of Jesus. Um, and she was still in those moments when suddenly Jesus, for the disciples at least, went from hero to somebody who was completely humiliated. She stood by his side. Um, and coming back to the tomb, the days following, especially in the dark, like she was not from Jerusalem. Yeah. She wasn't from that area. She was from uh, Magdala. So she didn't know what Jerusalem was like at dark at night. She had that much love for Jesus that she went in the dark in a place that she didn't know to go and find the tomb that Jesus was, was buried in. And I feel like that's, that pure love that she had for Jesus is such a, a beautiful characteristic of Mary. Quite brave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> extremely so. Mm. And standing by him through thick and thin, you know, you said she was quite, probably quite wealthy um, and giving a lot of that up to the point where she stood with him at the cross, yeah. where the disciples did not. Yeah, nothing else mattered. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Extreme love. What are Esther's best qualities? So, yeah, Esther's best qualities. I think I think she was extremely well, brave to go forward and and when she knew what was, what was the the possibility. Um, so take took extreme courage, um, and to know that you know there's this law that they they they're trying to to create against the Jews, and she's in fact Jewish. So there are two laws in that in that sense. A approaching well, first one approaching the king without without um, uh, prior arrangements, um, which yeah could have could have had it killed, and then obviously the the, the Jewish law that they're they're trying to put in place. So I think it took extreme courage to approach and approach the king and like no, I'm I'm not we're not happy with this. Um, so yeah, speaking out, I think I think that's quite quite something. Um, one of the things that comes out, comes out of the whole story is like you're not alone. God is with you. God is standing with you, um, and I think that's that's you know that's quite he- that's quite heavy. The bad times have passed, and um, yeah, I think many people in today's society forget that. You know, we often think that we have to take on the world by ourselves. So it's definitely something that we can learn is that you know we must understand that that God is always on our side and that you know with Him we can accomplish most things in life exactly exactly what i also appreciate about esther is her tactfulness um, and her thoughtfulness um, and how she took time to think about her actions um, and how she took time to really pray about them um, and fast 
and she even told Mordecai to fast with her before going to the king. So that, that also shows that relationship with God and how she knew that she was putting her trust um, in God. Yeah, I think Powerful. she she also um, I think she also ran a lot of stuff by Mordecai. Uh, they had a lot of discussions and, and things like you know this could go completely wrong, and I, like I can just imagine the nerves um, that both of them had. I mean, they could both lose this, lose their lives over this. Um, so I think I think they ran past the, the negatives and the positives, and yet they still went with it. Yeah, there, there was an intentionality behind it. It wasn't just like okay, cool, we're going to do this tomorrow, like with the fasting with. The the pre-thought and talking to Mordecai there was an intention behind her courage it wasn't just a thing of like yeah let's stand up now or just barging in there and be like I want to know why you know, yeah. this is what I want and Yeah, she she planned it she planned her words well and the timing well and I think it, it shows great great faith awesome Warwick so yeah I think uh, the biggest quality of Ruth that was the question eh uh, no, no, the question was um, what color hair was Ruth? Uh, <laughs> I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. What did she eat? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, going back to the quality, I think Ruth's best quality was how loyal she was. You know, she married into a family where all the men passed away, and you know she still stood with her mo- mother-in-law. You know, she had to. She took on a whole new life. She moved away from her family, like her, her what she knew, into a, to a new town or a new city, uh, and had to change her whole way of living uh, and I think that that's quite cool you know like I think yeah for me that's one of my like big qualities in people is their loyalty you know if if, if someone's willing to stand with me in, in what I do and you know have have my back in situations that's like a, a great quality in a friend or you know someone that you would like to marry one day um, so yeah I think it was really brave of her as well uh to, to to take that i don't know that step in a sense um but yeah things things did work out for her at the end of the day and i think that's just a, a key thing that you can take out of it is that you know god lets lets these things happen you know they might not be the best things but at the end of the day some good will come out of it mm-hmm. It's crazy how like her her bravery was fed so much by her loyalty to Naomi. Like she she wanted to fulfill the the space like you mentioned of helping Naomi after she lost everyone around her. Exactly. It's so powerful. Yeah, you know, imagine you were Naomi, you know, you you're telling your daughter and was the people that you've created this relationship with and they've had this relationship with your sons to now stay and you go back to Bethlehem by yourself. And I think Ruth had sympathy for you, you know, to, to for Naomi to move back to Bethlehem with the people that have accepted her, you know, there was so, so, so much uncertainty in those, those days, you know, and traveling wasn't that easy. It wasn't like you jump on an airplane and fly back to where you were from. Uh, you had to, to hike or, you know, it took a couple of days it's interesting how their faith brought them together and how they became became like a new family um you know part of god's family Mm. yeah definitely yeah it's powerful yeah really cool how do you think these stories relate to us and to today's time yeah um so for for mary magdalene's i think you know the thing that i spoke about earlier about they were expecting one thing of Jesus and then Jesus suddenly was on the cross and they were like, what the heck's going on? I feel like we oftentimes either, if we're praying for something or you know, something, something's happening in our lives, we expect something from God in a specific way. Um, and oftentimes God actually does something completely different. And I think one of the big things we can take away from Mary is that when he does do something different, We don't have to run like the disciples and suddenly hide and be like, oh no, my whole world's crumbled. But if we focus on the person of Jesus and who Jesus is, um, there's so much much more in that space because by running and hiding, we're focusing on how we've been let down or how we've, how something's happened to us. And we focus on the person of Jesus, um, we, we may actually understand eventually the truth of what Jesus was doing in the same way that Mary did. When Mary encountered Jesus, she actually saw him and she understood, okay, he is risen now. Um, so she was focusing on him and he met her there. 
and reached her in that space and and she kind of realized okay it's different to what we expected but it's something even better than what i was expecting so having that like unbridled love for christ that even in moments when it feels like god's doing something different than what we were expecting to focus on the person of jesus keep our eyes on him and not our circumstances or the things that are happening that we expected from him yeah i think people in situations like that often blame god Mm -hmm. instead of fully trusting his his way Yeah. Yeah. yeah and and in some of those instances they might even be the first person to understand what God is doing in the same way that Mary was the first person. So by trusting rather than blaming, we can reach the conclusion sooner of, oh, Jesus was doing this in my life. Um, because if we're blaming, we forget that. We, we, we don't realize that because we have our mind set on that one place. It's, it's not putting your expectations on God. Awesome. Esther. Esther. Um, so yeah, I think in the... Mo- in, in the current current times, I think we we find ourselves in exactly the same thing. We find ourselves in situations that aren't aren't comfortable, and I think I think we need to to realize that that God's with us. We're not alone. Um, we we have made mistakes. Other people make mistakes, and God's got us, got our back. He, he understands us. Um, he he's got a plan plan set out already for us. Um, so yeah, we're not alone when you when you when you, when you think you are alone. Yeah, it's almost that that space of he gives the courage that we need in those moments. Like if there's something to stand up against, if there's something happening around us, like being intentional about relying on him, we have the courage to step forward and 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 come against those things. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, and and speaking out, um, speaking to somebody, it could could be that exact thing that changes that, that, that moment, mm. and that person could be the the person that you need to speak to. Um, so yeah, and that community um, exists, so yeah. Thank you, Warwick, what can you tell us about Ruth? So yeah, I think in Ruth's thing we can, what we can take from, or what we can take from it that applies to today is that God loves everyone in the world, you know, regardless of race, nationality, you know. Ruth was a Moab, M- Moab? Moab. Mm. Moabite. M- Moabite, oh yeah. <laughs> Ruth was Marmite. a Moabite. <laughs> she was a Moabite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ruth was was born a Moabite, and she moved to uh, Judas, uh, Bethlehem, and you know she 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 changed her whole way of living, and God kind of took her under His wing, you know, and God made like huge huge plans for her from mm. small actions that took place in the story. Uh, mm. So you know you might might be going through some hard times here and there. But understand that, you know, God has got you. He, he's got a plan for you. Um, yeah. Yeah, like her, her circumstances went from not so great to trusting in God. And her circumstances went to a space where Boaz, a wealthy man, wed her. Like <laughs> they were together and she was taken care of. Yeah. Mm. And from that, the lineage uh, of that family was part of Jesus, you know. Jesus was born through all of that yeah, so yeah. that's also quite cool you know our savior wouldn't have been born if that whole event didn't take place yeah family and community again exactly i think one of the cool things about what you were saying now about ruth is how she was a moabite and a woman um she's she's one of the only women who's mentioned in jesus genealogy yeah. because she played such an important role in everything and you know in today's today's day and age the 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 bridge between equality for men and women is is closing very very quickly yet it's still important to know that god respected women from way before that was the case like women play such a huge part in god's story and it is still true today that there is no space where a woman is less than a man or, or seen as less than. And, and, and it's a space where we've got to create the awareness of offering up that space for, for, for men to, to respect women as equal. Yeah. It's amazing to hear these stories from the Bible um, and it's quite inspirational. Uh, these women have such great uh, strength of character. Mm. They are faithful to God. Mm. They are their faith never wavered 
um, and they have what I've noticed about all of them is they all have integrity which means not just acting as a good person but actually being a good person yeah yeah and we can all take these lessons we've learned and apply it both men and women can apply it to their lives um, mm. and I think it will help us be more like Jesus if we look at Genesis 2 verse 22 that's where we see God creating the man and then creating the woman from the man um, so we do know that men and women are different mm. But different doesn't mean less valuable or less in any way. Um, so as you preluded, Devin, man, you better respect women. But also it goes both ways. Yeah, woman, you better respect ma- men. God, you are God's creation. These are God's creations. And that's how you need to see people, that mm. that is God's creation. And you dare not disrespect them yeah. for any reason. Yeah, I think I think it's also powerful in, in Genesis. It, it, it says... God created them in his image. He, man and woman, he created in his image. He didn't create man in his image. He didn't create woman in his image. He created man and woman in his image. There's no, there's no space of going, yeah, he gave men these qualities and women, eh, the lesser qualities. Like it's man and woman mm. together make up his image, which is powerful. Definitely, and I think that applies to yourself as well. You are you need to tell yourself that you are God's creation and God chose you to make to make you in this way and you are special and you are his. So not to over criticize yourself and disrespect yourself because God doesn't make mistakes. And equality is a topic that's quite relevant today in the world. But I also don't think the world necessarily handles it correctly. Mm. Um, it almost becomes like a competition and mm. who can be mean to the other one and who's better. Yeah. It becomes this battle between the sexes, which I do not think is was ever God's intention. Mm. Um, so I think it's important not to get caught up in that, in that culture, and especially on social media, um, but to be Jesus to the world. And like Esther, we need to be God's voice in this. Um, I know in Esther somewhere it says that you were chosen for a time like this. Yeah. So God knew where he was putting you and which time he was putting you and what body he was putting you. Mm. And we need to be the light. If we look at Romans 6 verse 20 to 23, it says it speaks about how we are all sinners and the punishment for sin is death. And that is what we all deserve. We, are all, we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Um, and that includes both men and women. It, it's super important to keep that in mind because that also shows us that we are all equally bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're all in the same boat and we all need forgiveness. Um, and I was reminded the other day, we all need to repent. And it's repentance is not just saying sorry, but it means changing your ways. Mm. Um, and, and, and we need to take that time to do that because I know I definitely don't do it enough. I'll often say sorry without changing my behavior. Um, and that's something both men and women need to do frequently. Yeah. Say it and mean it. Say it and mean it, yes. Yeah. The core of being a godly woman and a godly man is essentially the same. It's seeking his will, seeking him, getting to know him, building a relationship with him and going out and being disciples. Um, and teaching people God's way, which is the right way. Yeah, the, the, the Great Commission is for everybody. It's not, it's not a, a selective thing. It wasn't even just a case of, as Jewish people, you know, this is the Great Commission. Like, it, it's for everybody. Um, and Jesus is for everybody. He, he offers up who he is equally to everybody. And that's so important. For the next section, uh, we want you to think of a woman that has done something in your life, that has meant something to you, that has inspired you, uh, taught you something. It can be one woman, it can be more than one. And we want you to take just a few minutes and write them a message. It can be on your phone, it can be email, it can be a physical message that you are writing. Um, and just tell them how they've influenced your life in a positive way and maybe thank them for that and then you can send it to them now or later if you don't get to finish now. So we're going to give you about 10 minutes to do that and then we're going to go into groups.
we just like to remind everybody that if you have any prayer requests, please post it on the Discord page. There's, there's a link that says prayer requests and um, then everybody can pray for you. Or if you need to talk to somebody, the Young Adults Committee is here. Um, we are on WhatsApp on Discord. Um, yeah, please talk to us if you need anything. Deb, will you pray for us? Sure. Let's close off in prayer. Father, thank you for the space where we get to come together as a young adult group and, and celebrate women, where we get to spend the month recognizing the impact that women have had in so many people's lives. And Father, as, as we've looked at it tonight, there's so much to it. There's so much to the lessons that we can learn from so many different people in Scripture. And that excludes nobody, Lord. So Father, help us to, to remember the lessons that we've learned tonight from these powerful women from Scripture and allow us to implement them in our lives, Lord. Allow us to, to step forward in courage, to know that we can have that courage from you, to love you with a purity like Mary's. And Father, to, to, to have a, a, a loyalty and, a, and a, a, a loyalty to the people around us and a trust in you like Ruth, Father knowing that you will provide and that you have our best interests at heart. Allow us to, to stay at home safely <laughs> and to draw close to each other both digitally and in whatever other space that may look like at the moment, Lord. Just allow us to come back safely and to draw closer to you in everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah, we took great bravery. Bra great bravery. <laughs> <laughs> Through the thick, t thick. A <laughs> God still had a plan uh, to take control. Huh? Plan to take care of them. Uh, plan to take care of them. Let me say that again. Is this going to just be a blooper reel? I'm just.